Today, I'm going to share 10 photographs I have scoured the internet for, which are my personal favorite photographs of the Wanaka tree. It is located in New Zealand, and it is known as that Wanaka tree. I would say it's probably one of the most photographed trees around the world. I want to share with you 10 very distinct images that all bring something a little bit different to the table, and let's jump straight in. So our first image comes from Farhat Merman. I haven't heard of this photographer before, so sorry if I butchered your name, but this is a really beautiful photograph of the Wanaka tree. It was actually attacked and lost this lower branch to a vandal a few years ago, so that kind of ages this photograph as being a little bit further back. The golden light in this photograph, boy, you'd be really happy to have captured that on this morning. And obviously taken in autumn when both the Wanaka tree and the lakeside erupt in orange autumn colours, which is really beautiful, as well as this lovely early season snow. One thing that you'll note is it is a very centralised composition. We've got the Wanaka tree almost in the dead centre. Our horizon line is almost in the dead centre. And we've got these arrows pointing inwards from either side, which is created by the reflections of the environment. But there is nothing wrong with having a centralized composition. So if any of you out there are uh, convinced that you have to shoot rule of thirds all the time, just ignore that. You don't have to. I think when you have a powerful subject, there is nothing wrong with putting it dead center if the subject is exciting enough to hold your attention by doing that. Our next image, also a dead center composition, Daniel Corden. You can see Daniel had it on a more of a Ripley day. He has done a great job of containing the tree within that mountain in the background and mostly within the mountain's reflection that allows this foliage to really stand out. And it really has to because the framing of this image with the trees from the lakeside is so vibrant that if it didn't have that background separation in the center, we would actually lose the tree pretty much completely. Now this one from Jared Casting. I don't know how to say his last name, but he's an excellent photographer in Australia. And this is a beautiful photograph. You've got all these beautiful autumn leaves in the foreground that carry us through up into the reflection of the Wanaka tree. Jared did really well with the conditions here. There's this lovely low fog in the background that's blocking out the mountains. Now, the mountains are spectacular, but this allows that lower branch to really have a nice clean spot in the composition. And then you've got some beautiful pink tones up here in the sky as well, just to support the whole thing and make it feel a little bit special. I think Jared's done a fantastic job with that one. Now, this one is a little bit special, I reckon. Now, there is a lot of astrophotography done of the Wanaka tree as well. This is a pretty beautiful example of it. I do think that there's probably a lot of cross-toning in here to bring in all of these purple colors but I don't think that they're too overdone. I think it's really in support of the subject and it works well. You can see that the photographer has very intentionally waited for the right time that has the Milky Way going in line with the Wanaka tree here. It's a pretty standard kind of composition that you would look for when you're shooting Milky Way photographs is to have the Milky Way pointing to it, but this is done so well. And just because you know to be there on the right day at the right time, does not mean you're going to get the weather that this person has to perfectly capture that shot. Now, this photograph from Linda is a little bit more low-key, but it also shows some of the bird life that's in this area. It looks like there's a couple of ducks hiding away there behind the lower branch and another duck there nearing the base. I do really like this duck nearing the base. It just adds a little quirky touch that really separates it out from all of the other images. And with the beautiful fog that this Wanaka tree has been photographed in, it's really a photograph that's minimal and just about the tree and its own character and beauty without any distractions whatsoever. A really beautiful shot from Linda. Now, this photograph is from Pure Pixel, and unfortunately I don't know who Pure Pixel actually is by name, but this is a beautiful photograph. The texture that the snow is creating across the whole image is just really beautiful and delicate. You've got the tree here in the snow. There's perfect separation with all of the background elements. And then you've just got this really gentle element of the lakeside there on the left. 
I think it's a really elegant, beautiful and atmospheric image. All right, so now we have a black and white photograph by Martin Bissoff. Again, this is a very minimal styled photograph, but there's a lot of elegance and atmosphere. I really like that you can still see the island back here. It's so subtle, but just gives it just a little bit of a sense of place and a little something extra. The birds sleeping in the Wanaka tree gives these nice little pops of contrast throughout the upper branches, and that gives it some interest as well. Overall, it's a beautifully treated black and white photograph. Very impressive. This photograph gives a bit of edginess to Lake Wanaka that I haven't seen before. You've got these beautiful little waves coming in, which are probably created from some pretty strong winds over the water. It gives it a little bit more of a dramatic feel than some of the other images that have really soft and gentle water. And this is well supported with some beautiful looking conditions in the sky and that orange of the Wanaka tree really standing out against that. Okay, now we've got a photograph from Joshua Cripps. This is a different perspective of the Wanaka tree, which is a nice surprise. You can actually see the town of Wanaka behind the tree here. However, most of the tree is above that horizon line, which gives it some separation. I think Joshua has very intentionally made this choice so that you could see all of these beautiful ripples and patterns under the water here. Let's look at this area here. That is just stunning the texture that's in that little part there. Now, if you chose another angle, you might not have been able to get those beautiful lines leading towards the tree, so I suspect that's why it's been captured in that way, and it's been captured really beautifully. Okay, we got this photograph from Paul, and this is another different look, very golden, and yet it doesn't look autumnal. I think this is probably taken sometime in winter or early spring, we can see that there's some snow along the range here and the leaves aren't still on the tree. That's kind of the orange of the ends of the little branches. And the lake is actually high enough that it's starting to submerge that lower branch as well, which is really interesting. One of the things you will have noticed about many of these photographs is that there's just a beautiful separation of the tree from the background. And here it is once again supported by that lovely island in the middle of Lake Wanaka as well. I'm not putting my version of the Wanaka tree in contention here, but I do like to share my own work as well. I think it's only fair that if I'm looking at other people's work, then I have to let other people see my work. I was lucky enough to be there when there were no other photographers there, and that was because the weather was absolutely miserable. Uh, I was doing long exposures to capture this. So you can see that through the reflection of the tree here that's beautifully blurred out. And you can see what the effect of the weather is having by how invisible the background is. You can only just see the landmass on the right-hand side. These birds in the tree really add some interest, especially that some of them are turned away and showing the black of their coat, and then some are facing camera and showing the white of their coat. Now, I believe I've included a couple of photographs as a bit of an honourable mention. Let's have a look here. Ah, yes, this one from Daniel Murray. Now, if you want a Wanaka tree photograph with drama, well, it's going to be hard to beat this. Look how huge the moon is, and you've even got a meerkat in the background, which is bonus points because apart from in zoos, you don't have meerkats in New Zealand. I appreciate very much the effort that he's made in adding the reflections of those elements into the water. And obviously, this is a bit of a satirical photograph from him, so I don't feel bad about pointing it all out. This one was close to my top 10 as well. Look at how beautiful that is, the star trails behind the Wanaka tree there by Carl Lamy. And this one was kind of hard to include in the top 10 simply because there are a few black and whites already, but this one is one of the best black and whites, I think. What makes this photograph even more interesting other than this mirroring of a tree is you've got the mirroring of a duck flapping its wings in there too, which is creating this interesting X-like shape. Overall, a really beautiful arty interpretation of the Wanaka tree. So that's it. Thanks for joining me for what I've found to be the top 10 Wanaka tree photographs. I'm sure that there are even better photographs out there that I couldn't discover or didn't find. Feel free to link me to some really exceptional photographers in the comments if you like. Otherwise, I'd be really interested to know what your favorite is, whether you've been to the Wanaka tree, 
It's a really beautiful place to photograph. However, it is done to death and it does look very different now that the bottom branch has been cut off. Anyway, be sure to like and subscribe if you've liked this content and I'll see you next time. Thank you.